Hey guys, I'm back with another Sigma FP video for you. Looks like I've got something of a tutorial series on the FP, it seems. Well, I don't expect to be making that many more videos on the camera unless you'd like more information on it and some specific things that you'd like me to test out or check. Definitely let me know in the comments below. But in this video, I wanted to take things a little bit further from what I explored in the previous video, which was comparing the internal Cinema DNG RAW to recording external Blackmagic RAW on the FP. Now, there are three flavors of internal Cinema DNG RAW. You've got 8-bit, 10-bit, and 12-bit. And I wanted to compare each of them because the file sizes are, you know, pretty significantly different. Certainly, recording in Cinema DNG is, as I've said, uh, a very large file sizes. It's going to take up a lot of space on your SSD drive. But, as I also said in the previous video, it is really worth it to shoot in Cinema DNG to really get the full, absolute, 100% raw, unfiltered, highest quality image out of this camera. But because you've got the three flavors, I wanted to test out, is it really necessary to record in the full uncompressed 12-bit RAW, or can you get away with recording in 10-bit or 8-bit? Could I get enough latitude out of the image to justify using the lower bit depths? All right, guys, so let's get into it. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I've got a couple clips I wanna show you guys. On the timeline here, I've got the clips that are orange, those are the 8-bit clips, the green ones are 10-bit, and the pink ones are 12-bit. So this scene that we're going to look at, uh, the environment, you know, it was uh, quite a bright uh, and sunny day, despite all the clouds, um, a lot of vibrant colors. I wanted to kind of, you know, enhance the colors and saturation, push the footage to show, you know, where does it start to break down based on the different bit rates. Uh, but we got a lot of high contrast lighting. There's some strong highlight areas, some strong shadow areas, good dynamic range. Let's take a look at these clips. Here's the 8-bit footage. Take a look here at the 10-bit footage now. So here we've got 12-bit. I do think that the details, they pop out much faster in the 12-bit footage. But in general, you're not going to see a whole lot of difference. At least I'm not. Uh, and we can pixel peep here, but between the 8 to the 12-bit, I mean, this is the 8-bit footage. The amount of detail here is really fantastic. Great, just fantastic dynamic range. Even though it's 8-bit, the, you know, the amount of color, quality of the gradations in the sky, I think it looks great. I think it looks really great. Take a look at the 10-bit maybe start to see a, just a touch more detail in the cloud areas, but um, I don't see a, a huge difference between the 10-bit and the 8-bit. Uh, and likewise, with the 12-bit here, it's really kind of the same story. So for your generally well-lit areas in your scenes, you're not gonna have much of an issue using 8-bit, it's gonna be really sufficient for you. So you can save the storage space. But in the areas of higher contrast, particularly in darker areas, 
this is where things start to get interesting. We take a look at the 8-bit footage. Pay attention here to the metal structure, the details. If I uh, go full screen here, you see that kind of in the uh, corners there, it gets, uh, it gets a bit lost. It gets a bit lost in terms of the, the details in this really intricate metalwork. Here now in the 10-bit footage, I can start to see some of those details that were just completely washed out in the 8-bit footage, completely washed out. Now appear much more visible in the 10-bit footage. And in the 12-bit footage, it actually has a little bit of a nice grain to it. Uh, it's, you know, really the full uncompressed raw there, that 12-bit that DNG. And you're going to get the most amount of detail out of the darker areas. Yeah, it's just like a softening filter, a denoiser almost has been used in the 8-bit footage compared to the 12-bit, which is completely raw, uncompressed. Let's take a look at another scene here. I'll just play through the clips here. We've got the 8-bit footage, you know, lots of contrasty areas with this pretty bright sky. I do think that it's always important to expose correctly with this footage. Expose for the highlights. That's the 10-bit uh, footage right there. And here we've got the 12-bit footage. The detail in the sky, metal of the buildings, it's all really great detail. It's all quite clear between the three bit rates. But if we pop over to our color page and let's push the footage here a bit. Let's take this down two stops. Okay, we really just lose all of the detail in most of the shadows there. It's all completely gone, right? Here's the normal exposure and now two stops under. If we apply that to the 10 bit footage again, uh, you know, maybe a touch more detail pops through, but check out the 12 bit footage. This is pretty wild. All of this detail is retained that gets basically crushed out in the 8 and 10 bit footage. Yeah, here's 10 bit. A few of the windows pop up a little bit, but it's almost completely crushed out. And likewise with the 8 bit footage. So if you are working in darker environments or having some really high contrasty sort of looks or lighting situations that you're dealing with, then you are gonna wanna go with the 12-bit uncompressed cinema DNG. The flexibility that it offers is really stunning. Now, if we go the other way and pop this two stops over, you know, our sky is totally blown out here for the most part in the 8-bit footage. About the same there in the 10-bit, maybe a bit more detail is retained. And, you know, I guess you could argue that you get a touch more detail even than that in the 12-bit footage, but Highlight areas, really, really bright areas, those ones you have to expose for even in the 12-bit. They can, you know, easily get lost um, if you're too overexposed. But thankfully, uh, the 
Cinema DMG footage, you can really correct it down to, I would imagine, three or four, maybe even more stops and retain detail. So if you missed out on uh, your exposure during the shot, you know, maybe say you're out uh, in the city, out on the beach or something, and you end up getting this, you know, coming in, this is your exposure zero, right? Just bring it down a couple stops. Bring that detail all right back. Well guys, I gotta say, the Sigma FP just continues to surprise me. This camera has so much going for it, so much potential. In my original video where I reviewed this camera, which I will link down below in case you haven't seen it already, I mentioned a few things at the end of the video that I hoped Sigma would incorporate into a potential future version of the Sigma FP. Now those still stand, but I think that you know, it really just boils down to getting a bit of a higher resolution out of the sensor. It is a 6K sensor. I would love it if we could shoot in that full 6K instead of only when taking photographs. And also if we could just get a little bit more in terms of frame rate out of this camera. 6K at 60 frames per second would be just mind-blowing, but honestly I'd even take 4K at 60 frames per second. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like me to make some more videos on the Sigma FP, I'd be more than happy to. Just let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, click the subscribe button, and the notification bell so you're notified the next time a new video drops. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.